congratulations <laughs> on the on the breakthrough Brits and everything. It must be great that it's it's BAFTA that are giving you the recognition and such a great platform, not just for the film but for you as as artists. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. <laughs> what would you what did, what was your reaction when you found out that you were that you? All, I mean, all these things are happening so quick because it's all happened during this yeah, kind of whirlwind like a of a festival. Blur of like, oh, it's going because it's really cool. Yes, it's all going better than we expected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but perhaps not deepest, darkest, privatest hopes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. What was your kind of, when you were going into the, uh, obviously into the festival, was this, was this the world premiere of the film at LFF the, or was uh, it? At TIFF. UK premiere. At TIFF, sorry, yeah. UK so you, you've been in a whirlwind for a few yeah. a few weeks. So it must be great that you've come out at the end of it almost and the reactions have yeah, been positive. Yeah, it's lovely. We, I mean, and we, um, we, we premiered at Toronto not that long after actually finishing the film. I mean, yeah, well, like, three weeks or something. It was really, yeah. really quick. So yeah. we sort of went straight from like finishing the film to then being able to have the premiere, and then it's just sort of been festivals and screenings and stuff like that. And then, as you say, got this um, IWC grant thing, and uh, and now this. Yeah. I think people like it, which yeah. is a relief. Yeah. Yes. It must be. I'm all, I'm all, I'm always curious about with the festivals because you, as filmmakers, obviously, say you had like three weeks to. Did you have three weeks to put it together to have it ready for Toronto, or did you just? As in, like, kind of three as weeks? in, we from the point that we finished finished the film, so sort of finished post production. It was about three weeks, a month, or something until we were then going out to Toronto to hmm. to squeeze. Was that good that it was time. so quick, rather than because sometimes I guess you make a film and you have to wait six, yeah. eight, twelve months to for it to that have was, be screened for the that first was time. lovely. I mean, it, it definitely means that we're probably quite um, tired now, but in a very. <laughs> um, haven't switched off for a little while but in the best possible way yeah it would, I think it would have been a bit it's, I imagine it's quite frustrating to sort of finish it and then be like right now you have to sit on the film for the next six months and not show anybody what you've been doing It'd be like, Ugh. so yeah it's been it's been nice to get on with it straight away yeah. but yes it was quite it was it's a bit of whiplash because you're kind of uh yeah you kind of finish it and then you're rapidly printing a DCP and you you know it's not quite turning up to the festival with rolls of wet film but it's almost felt like that and then yeah and then suddenly we're in this restaurant waiting for midnight to roll around to show the film to an audience for the first time, critics for the first time, like buyers for the first time, all our sales, all our reviews, everything on yeah. this one screening. <laughs> it's good because you, well, because making the film, you sort of get sucked into this like weird little private bubble and you become really close with the people that you're making the film with, but it does, you do get sort of cut off from the real world and obviously we've been like developing the film together for you know a few years before that as well so it's just been for us like a thing we've just been obsessively working on for ages but you feel like no one else in your life has any idea what you're really doing and then now suddenly oh. <laughs> like I had some of my fa uh, some of my um uh cousins came to see the the film at the at the London premiere and they came up to me afterwards like we didn't realize you were making a real film kind of thing. I was <laughs> like what do you think I've been doing all this time <laughs> in terms so of the nice. getting the film together was it a long process from you writing it and getting the finance and everything else, was that a bit of a struggle or was that did it come quite easily, all that kind of stuff? Oh, well, it's never easy. <laughs> it's never easy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I guess it probably... We, we were very lucky. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think in the grand scheme of things, in terms of the industry and probably typically how films are made, it was probably... No, it was really prime. I mean, we, yeah, we, we kind of... we were quite lucky. Yeah, so, so um, we but it didn't first come. met, just as you were graduating from film school and I was working at QWERTY Films for Michael Kuhn, and, and we kind of kept in touch, and you had some you know, this idea, and we kind of, you know, so, and then about a year later, I was leaving QWERTY to set up on my own. And, you know, Rose developed this idea a bit more, and you know, I asked her if she'd, you know, uh, let me take it with me and and, and develop it together. Um, and fortunately, she said yes. And then you know, we worked on it a bit more yeah, together. Yeah, so it's probably a, after that there was still probably at least a year or so before we sort of officially were in development with film four yeah. so we were just kind of like working on the treatment and kind of yeah. um getting the idea to as clear a place and then we developed it with film four and i was writing the script for two a couple years, of years yeah, maybe two years and um our co-producer andrea cornwell came on board and eventually um bfi came on board to um co-finance so from the point that we sort of were in development with film four to actually shooting was maybe like and two and a half, half years, years, two and a half years, which I think is pretty quick. Yeah, generally. But obviously, speaking. when you're in it, it feels particularly because it's a, both of our first film. I don't know. I don't know about you. I sort of never quite believed it was actually happening until it was lit. Until we actually sort of like had an office and a crew, and, and yeah. it was, until then, you're still kind of like <laughs> contorted with fear that like you're sort of putting all your work and effort into this into this thing, that still there's no no guarantees. Um, so yeah, it's been. I don't know. It's been great. 
we've been really lucky with the people that we've had around us and supporting the film. Uh, show that. Has it been <laughs> strange it watching long. the film again since, obviously because it's your first film, have you, have you seen it, do you see it in a different light after you've kind of detached yourself from it for a few months or do you see it in a Still way that you're kind of like, because mm, I've done this, I've done that, because it's your, per your first yeah, one, I guess yeah. you not make mistakes, but... Oh God, as, you, no, no. as you carry on, I guess when you see it detached from when you were making it, it's I still, I guess different. I still don't feel detached from it. I don't mm. know about you, I still feel pretty... Well, yeah, we were just, because um, we did some tiny tweaks um, and whatever, so we were just doing another DCP review the other day. and um, Just small stuff in the sound. Yeah. Not a major recap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we major changed the We changed the ending, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, she flies now. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> but um, but no, yeah, we've literally kind of like still been kind of like, we'll keep fiddling with it until yeah, someone literally... Yeah, very, very last moment. But um, but yeah, that was the first, I hadn't, because we didn't sit in in many of the London screenings and the Toronto bit, it was the first time I'd had a bit of a while from it and then seeing it in this non kind of zhuzhi environment, just in a screening room, sitting, watching it with you and our post supervisor. Yeah. And like, and I'm just looking at that and then I thought, yeah, it's... it's, it's Good, so I'm, I'm proud of this because you kind of don't have any perspective. You've just worked yeah. your hardest and hope that it's enough. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely sort of, a, I'm, I mean, I'm really proud of the film, um, but obviously every time I watch through it, they're still kind of like, oh, maybe I do, uh, maybe I change, I don't know, this, that, and blah, blah, blah. But that's probably inevitable with anything that you make. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's but definitely sort of, you d there's definitely a slight feeling of sort of like letting it go out into the world when people, when it does suddenly become a thing that, um, you're showing to other people for the first time sort of starts to I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I I've seen it and I thought it was amazing. And I was saying to you just off camera beforehand how I usually you go to these press screenings and everyone's there to do a review and they're, they're no, taking notes and stuff, but it's sort of pretty much a public audience and yeah. I guess you can gauge the reaction a little bit different in terms of especially not to give it any away, but the way that it goes and the end and everything else. The the genuine reaction from from film goers about their what they love the movie and the kind of the shock yeah. of everything, everything else. I mean, th that must be good for you guys when you see, rather than hearing the critics' reviews, that the audiences are embracing it in the same way and kind of taking away what you hoped they would take away from it. Yeah, I mean, that's um, that's the most kind of uh, satisfying feeling, I guess, when people laugh when you hope they would and sort of scream when you hope they would and little things which kind of, as you're writing it or shooting it or editing it, you sort of obviously hope that what you've got in your head is the thing that you're actually making. But again, it's sort of until you actually see it with an audience of people who aren't in any way involved in the making of it, you never quite know. Um, yeah, particularly the laughing and screaming in the right places is very satisfying to watch and hear with an audience around you. Now we've sort of got to the, I mean, again, not to like give any stuff away, but particularly towards the end of the film, there's a few um, uh, quite sort of extreme moments, I guess. Anyway, but now we've got to the point where we've seen the film so many times, before we've gone on to do Q&As and festivals and things, you know, we'll usually be sneaking into the back of the auditorium just a few minutes before the end of the film, before we go on. Uh, now I've got the point where I just watch the audience instead of watching the film. So like just when you know a particular moment's coming up, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> you do sort of know, and fr it's true from the very first screening, the Toronto Midnight Screening, I'd said to Andrea, who um, um, I produced it with, I was like, well, we're going to kind of know two seconds after it finishes how it went. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's just a little pause. And then, you know, do, how do people react to it? What's the kind of, you know... Um, and yeah, hearing the little moans, the sort of, oh no, <laughs> 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 that people say at the end is sort of, is very satisfying, but it's, it's tough, isn't it? We, we did yeah. one when, um, yeah, some, one, of our, one of the team was, we, was crying at the end, every now and again it catches you and you kind of, you know, because I think it is quite a punchy ending, so you can kind of... It is, and it's like, it's sometimes, maybe it sometimes comes across like we're being a bit sort of sadistic or something, like, um, oh, it's great when people sort of get shocked by certain things, and that is, that is fun, but I guess the whole film completely hinges, its success or failure hinges on whether or not you buy into more as a character, whether you care about her and empathise with her, and that was always kind of uh, the challenge that I sort of wanted to set up with the film, if you could get people to sort of empathise with somebody who ends up doing something so sort of extreme and behaving in such strange ways. Um, for me, that was always like the intention of the film to hopefully try and make it something that people actually can see themselves in, and hopefully there's actually quite universal uh, themes and motivations behind a lot of the stuff she does. It's just a lonely person kind of looking to connect with somebody. So it wouldn't have worked if it was just these kind of like shocking moments which, makes pe which make people um, wince, which obviously that is, that is great um, fun from a filmmaking point of view. But yeah, the fact that people kind of laughed and cried and really cared about her and were like, oh, that's the kind of main success, I guess. I suppose, and yeah, an audience has always been very 
the kind of key thing. Ultimately, they're the they're the judge. Yeah, they're the people. Yeah, you do it for them to kind of see if they. Yeah, they're the people who are care. parting with their hard-earned money. You've got to earn earn that yeah. from them, and and we, and we I think we always took that very seriously, and we're kind of thinking about the yeah, ride. Making a film actually on. for an audience and try and put yourself in their shoes rather than just being like, I've got this thing I want to Yeah, about. I think that's really important. Yeah, although I mean, you guys obviously, it's a fantastic job that you've done, but that that is a cracking performance. I mean, when, I, I can imagine you saw Warford on set and see what she was doing, but then when you put it together, yeah. even you as filmmakers must have gone, this, she's this pretty special, this performance, because she is oh, absolutely definitely. In, insanely good in this film. She is, and like, I mean, the as I said, the success of the film really sort of lives or dies by that performance and I, I think we we sort of we knew it from before the edit you know from her auditions when she came in it was like oh phew, okay good <laughs> she's brilliant because she cause, I don't know because it's she the character that takes you into such sort of strange seemingly strange places but um she's I don't know she she's a real com chameleon that probably sounds a bit wanky but she you know she was in three different films in London Film Festival playing four different roles and some lot of people have said they didn't even recognise her from film to film. She sort mm. of um, transformed so much. But she's just, she's just she's an incredibly um, gifted like comic actress as well, which was really important for us for this character to make sure that again the humour is like a big part of it and getting you to sort of empathise with her. Yeah, I she's 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 brilliant. And I think yeah, because we from the from the casting brief we always thought you know as as Rose said you know the empathy is is essential because you know unless the audience goes with her. Then there isn't really a movie. So and and she does do some pretty far out, weird and and quite savage things at times. So you know you need someone that you really really relate to and can draw that reaction from the audience. But I think I think neither I think or maybe you did, but I didn't I didn't realize quite how funny an actress she was. Like when we cast her and then yeah. like through the filming on the set, she just you know we always so we would have these meetings. Sometimes where we're like people are like it's really heavy the script and we're like yeah but all the gags as well and they're like there are be gags really funny. we're like yeah no no there's loads of jokes in it didn't you see the jokes they're like no yeah someone's like do you say that yeah someone's like do you say there's going to be humour in the film I'm like yes I'm like where does this humour come from like, the jokes the jokes yeah I'm like, hmm. um, and, and even I think when we were shooting some of it like some of the um, I don't know earlier on in the shoot I think maybe it's like a before everyone sort of relaxed into it but we're getting a few notes of the kind of like Oh, you know, maybe you need to find these like lighter moments. But some of the things she's doing, you can't. I thought, I don't know. I thought she was hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> but but she, yeah. She just wrong every. It's because she played because a lot of the humor is so humor. like deadpan, yeah. and because the character is never, she's never aware of when she's being funny. So maybe yeah. so, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, she Morpher did just the most amazing job with that. Yeah. Really, really, just nice every well. scene. And yeah, she's <laughs> such a great person. And I, you know, it's just. Yeah. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. It's so disgusting. Everyone always says that, but both she like really, really nice. is. Yeah, and both talented. of them are just <laughs> wonderful. And Jennifer was just absolutely phenomenal. And, yeah. and it, honestly, it does not only them being so talented, but them being such good people. It does make quite a big difference on a on a, on a low budget debut feature because you know actually them being part of the, so much part of the team and so engaged with Rose's vision and really wanting to it make that work. It made me so much more relaxed as well. Mm. It's like it's kind of yeah. like coming into it. Um, you know, obviously directing feature for the first time. I've never worked in theatre or anything, and I don't really have any like you know like drama at school. But apart from that, I don't know. When I'm whenever I'm working with actors, I'm always aware of. I'm always very aware of how much more they know about acting than I do, because obviously I'm like writing most of the time. And when you're doing shorts, you don't really you get like a few days shooting, and you don't really rehearse. Um, so this was like the longest chunk that I'd sort of worked closely with actors, and so that was kind of a thing I was nervous about going in, and they um. Yeah, made me feel really, really confident and comfortable. So, so I was very grateful yeah. and relieved. And they, yeah, and I think they were true collaborators in the process. You know, yes, yeah. um, the yeah, they were just very patient <laughs> as well. Do you know, generous and engaged, and yeah, and all the crew loved them, and it yeah. was it was good. Just finally, before you go, when when's the film? Have you got a release date yet uh, for it? Not not <laughs> not an exact date. So um, yeah, obviously we. Um, sold to um, Studio Canal in the UK, which is tremendous, and A24 in the US, Diaphana oh, in France. A24. Yeah, wow. A24 took Fantastic. it for the US, yeah, for North America, actually. <clears throat> and Diaphana in France, and then Sony took the rest of the world. So there's a bit of kind of organising to do, but it's looking like spring 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.